Since the end of the Cold War, the United States has enjoyed complete air superiority in almost any field it operates. This is in part thanks to its major airframe, the F-22 Raptor, being the best air-to-air -air platform on planet Earth. However, on December 24th, 2024, the Chinese unveiled not just one, but two sixth-generation air combat platforms to the rest of the world. This, in turn, has caused many people to look at the F-22 program and wonder, is it able to handle these upcoming aircraft? And if not, what is the course for the United States? Today on War Made Simple, we'll take a look not only at the Chinese aircraft, but also at other potential sixth generation aircraft coming into service within the 2030s. Hey guys, Bill here. Welcome back to another episode. I hope you had a fantastic weekend as we enter into the work week. So there was a lot going on the past couple of weeks with China. They've unveiled a bunch of new technologies and ships, but I want to talk about their Air Force today, specifically the unveiling of two new sixth generation aircraft. This is the entire world military community buzzing about this incoming aircraft and what its capabilities are. Right now, we don't really know too much about it aside what China has showed and made public in their media. And the Chinese media and especially their military has kind of a little bit of history of exaggerating their abilities and sometimes they're spot on. So we really don't know whether they're making this up or whether we should 100% take them at their word. It's kind of hard to say. But before we talk about the different Chinese platforms, let's talk about what a sixth generation aircraft is. So specifically, we're really looking at a sixth generation fighter. And we've talked about fifth generation fighters. There'll be a link to that below. But let's talk about how sixth generation kind of turns things up. It still keeps the stealth and maneuverability of the fifth gen fighters, but includes some new additions. Things like AI use, especially when it comes to kind of operating drones out of one combat platform. So one fighter is not just a fighter anymore, it's actually a squadron with a manned aircraft and a couple of drones around it. Second off, these aircraft will have the ability to go potentially into near orbit altitude. So these things will be able to fly above pretty much any other aircraft around. Next, these aircraft will potentially mount lasers. Yes, you heard me right, lasers. We're getting sci-fi now. But that is something that pretty much all of the sixth generation aircraft are looking into. Not necessarily going to be confirmed yet, but it's still a work in process. So it's a huge step up what our current fighter aircraft can do. So let's talk about the Chinese aircraft now that we've defined what a sixth generation fighter is. There are two aircraft that China showed off on the 24th, and that being the Chengdu J-36 and the Shenyang JXX prototype. Yeah, I'm aware I mispronounced both of those. I'm sure the comments are gonna rip me a new one. Don't care, it's the best I can do. But with that being said, these aircraft are tailless. And on top of that, China has alluded to the fact that they can make manned and unmanned versions of them and that they could potentially reach near orbit altitudes like we stated a sixth generation fighter is able to do. From what I've read, it doesn't appear like there's any laser-based systems mounted on these, but it does appear that at least one of these aircraft, I believe is the J-36, has an internal bomb bay of a decent size. And, and this is the big thing, China claims that these aircraft can launch hypersonic missiles. And that's a big deal if so. Now, when China revealed both of these aircraft, there was a knee-jerk reaction from much of the American public and from several different countries around the world, and that is, what in the world is going on? How did China beat America and Europe to the punch on a sixth-generation fighter? The answer, they didn't. In fact, the United States has had multiple fighter platforms fly between 2020 and 2023 as prototypes. Now, this is the big thing when it comes to sixth-gen fighters. I know for a fact that one of these two Chinese planes that flew was a prototype. I can't find out any information as of right now. If you guys have resources, I'd love to take a look at them. That says the J-36 is a prototype or if it's a mass producible platform. Regardless, America has the ability to kind of mass produce sixth generation fighters if it wants to. So why haven't we? Well, it ultimately comes down to one, the military industrial complex, and we've talked about that before in another video, link down below, and <laughs> uh, government bureaucracy. They see the F-22 platform and they say, hmm, this is an aircraft that really there is no equal to on planet Earth. Maybe the J-20 for China, but not necessarily in terms of stealth capability. So they look at the F-22 and say, we really don't need a sixth generation fighter. So America kind of has pumped the brakes on this next generation air dominance platform and just kind of put it to the side and reevaluated everything right now because there's really no need. 
or at least there wasn't until December 24th. So we might see the Americans jump back onto the sixth generation platform and see what they can do. While the United States is reevaluating their sixth generation program, the rest of the world is jumping on board with their own programs, specifically collaboration groups. You have Japan, Italy, and the United Kingdom coming together to work on the Global Combat Air Program to create their own sixth generation fighter. And you have the French, German, and Spanish program being the FCAS, or Future Combat Air System. Both of these programs are set to be kind of the European and Japanese uh, versions of the sixth generation fighter because it's a lot to develop one of these planes. And instead of trying to do it all individually, these groups are kind of coming together to build their own platform. The last group that is building a sixth generation fighter is the Russians and things aren't going super well with the Ukraine war because all the resources for this program are now being funneled into war fighting capacity. So unfortunately the Russian program, which is a variation of the pack for a sixth generation fighter, isn't really looking like it's going too far. In fact, they're saying that the first kind of development in terms of a prototype flight isn't going to be until 2027 at the earliest. So they're still a ways behind. Um, however, with that being said, China's reveal of functional sixth generation aircraft and on top of that, a potential mass production variant is definitely something that is a wake up call for the whole world. We might see a lot of sixth generation fighter programs that were kind of put on the back burner, moved up in importance, and the American programs that have been shelved might be reactivated. So this is going to be a very much evolving program as the years go on and we're about to enter the era of sixth generation aircraft fully thanks to China's reveal. But that's all I have for you guys today on sixth generation aircraft. If something more comes up, I'll let you know. Or if you guys find additional information on these aircraft, I would love to take a look at it. So leave it in the comments below. But with all that being said, I should be back to two videos a week. We'll see if something kind of comes up, but I want to get back to that two week schedule. I know I had roughly about a month and a half of busyness and things going on with work, so I apologize for that. But Regardless, I will see you guys all on Friday and hope you have a fantastic week. Take it easy.